Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is our final week for, for you to get this book, Give Me This Mountain. You know, one great blessing from this book is that it is like a journey. It's an expedition. We wrote it in such a way that it's like you're going for a hiking expedition and every chapter is your base camp. So from base camp one all the way, you know, throughout the book, you feel like your faith is building with every chapter as we study the life of Caleb. And Caleb is actually my, one of my favorite Bible characters because uh, uh, in his old age, at 85 years old, he says to uh, Joshua, give me this mountain. And he says this, I am as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me and as a spy. And that was like 45 years ago. And uh, yet he was strong today and he stood before Joshua and said, give me this mountain. And you know, people like Caleb, Joshua, they are people who are under the law. You know, they are people that uh, uh, they were there when God gave the Ten Commandments, you know. And one of it is, thou shalt not lie. So you know for a fact that when he says, I'm as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me, there's no exaggeration. It's not poetic license. Amen. He's as strong. What's his secret? And I share the secret in this book. And you will feel your faith built, being built up. Amen. And uh, just like Joshua and Caleb, you'll be among the minority because they were among the minority, two out of the 12 spies that would say, give me this mountain. The giants are bread for us. Amen. And the Lord honored the spirit. I love what the Lord said about Joshua and Caleb, especially Caleb. The Lord himself says this, but my servant Caleb, he has a different spirit. He will enter the land. I love that. He has a different spirit. And that's, that's what caused me to study on uh, Caleb and uh, the secret of his faith, which I reveal in this book. So I recommend you this book highly because I know it will be a blessing to you and you will build your faith. Are you ready for the word? Praise God. In the shepherd's psalm, Psalms 23, it's a picture of the Lord Jesus. Psalms 22 is the suffering of Jesus. Oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right? It starts with that. And then Psalms 23 is... Through the death of Jesus, we are now living today in Psalms 23. Psalms 24, lift up your everlasting gates and the King of glory will enter. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. So we are now in Psalms 23. And in Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not lack. Amen. Notice, all right, as we are going through um, um, what we call um, good times, right? We say, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What is that? He. In the third person, He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So it's like I'm talking, can you see it? It's like we are talking to someone about the Lord. So we are speaking of Him in the third person. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And friend, He leads me beside the waters of quietness. Amen. Waters of manuka. The Bible says quietness. And He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He restores my soul and He leads me in the paths of righteousness. By the way, these paths of righteousness is very interesting because when you go to Israel, you look at some of the hills and the, and the mountains and all that, they have like lines around them. Now, this is not done um, nat some, some geographical, uh, uh, you know, uh, movements of the earth or, or the winds or what. It is actually done by the sheep, the flock of many, in fact, even thousands of years in Israel, where the sheep will go around the paths of righteousness. We have a picture here. If you look below, can, don't look at the top of where the sheep are, the flock is. Can you see all these lines here? All right. So for many, many years, not only hundreds, but thousands of years in this land of Israel, you have sh uh, sheep going around it, around it. And that's how they, they, they can't go straight up. They can't go straight up because it's too dangerous for them to go straight up. All right, and they'll get discouraged as well. So what the shepherd does, the wise shepherd leads them in a circuitous, like in, in a circle, amen, like a winding stairs, all right? And, and, and that, the word there, magal in the Hebrew, is literally a circle, okay? A circle of righteousness, a circle. So he, he moves them in a circuitous movement, right? A circuitous route all the way. And the sheep don't even know he's making progress as he trots the path of righteousness. The more we teach righteousness, that's why in all my series uh, uh, this, uh, this time around, I'm actually bringing you along the paths of righteousness. Righteousness is not a verb. Righteousness is a noun. Righteousness is not something you do. Righteousness is something that you are, that God has made you to be. Amen? 
when Jesus came. Praise the Lord. And uh, that's how we should teach our children also. You know, we, we tell them to do something and, and we tell them, you know, this is what you need to do. And they look up and they see the, the end from where they are. It's like a steep valley. But if the wise father, you know, the mother who, who, who is spirit-filled will, will know to lead the child, amen, in a circuitous way, amen. Just slowly, just lead them, amen. And uh, uh, lead, to lead them doesn't mean you don't discipline them, amen. You discipline them. You make sure that they stay on the paths of righteousness, but that's how they make progress. Sometimes they go through uh, same old, they feel like they're going through round and round, going nowhere, but actually they're making progress upwards. And finally, they'll reach all the green pastures right on top. Many of the mountains, the green pastures are actually right on top. It's closer to the, the winds and the, the dew and the rain. So friend, praise God. Back to this again. Notice that as we are going through good times. We can afford to say he in the third person. But the next verse says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now watch this. Yea, do I. Yea, do I. Doesn't mean that you purposely walk in it. But even if, yea, do I walk through. Thank God we are walking through, not walking to stay in the valley of the shadow of death. So sometimes for the uh, Israeli shepherd, and the flock, they will go to valleys where it is dark and uh, there could be pitfalls, especially to, as evening falls and they're not back home yet. You know, it's dangerous and uh, it's, that's why it's called the shadow of death. But I was just telling my son the other day, you know, the shadow of a dog never beat anybody. Amen. The shadow of anything bad cannot hurt you. Amen. So it's called the shadow of death. Why? Jesus conquered death, amen? So for the flock, amen, it's only a shadow of death, an appearance, amen? But we're going through, and it's a, it's a dark time. It's not a good time. It's a dark time. It's a valley that speaks of trials, amen? Perhaps you're going through a valley right now. But notice um, what the shepherd does. He leads them. And, and uh, something about the uh, Israeli uh, shepherd, shepherding, okay? When it comes nighttime, this is what I learned from an uh, Israeli uh, shepherd guy. And uh, what, what happens is that uh, when they lead, they lead from the front. They don't lead from the back. They lead from the front and, and the sheep follow them. And the sheep know their voice. And the voice of a stranger, like Jesus says, they will not follow. And he will lead and the sheep will follow him. And the sheep find security in looking uh, uh, where he is. Now, all these principles you can apply for parenting as well. Amen. Set the example. Set the way. Don't be saying something and expect your children to be doing something else. Don't be speaking, you know, profanities and all that and expect your child to speak well. Amen. So, uh, we lead the way and they follow us. Amen. And, but when it comes to nighttime, this is what happens. It, it, they say that uh, when it comes to nighttime, they don't go by the front. Neither do they go to the back. They go in the middle. So the sheep is around them. And it's a very uh, uh, close knit, you know, like at night when it falls and they're not back home yet, the shepherd will make sure that he's in the center. And that's why here the psalmist says, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. He comes really close to them. You are with me. You know where the Lord is? Especially when you're going through a trial, closer to you than you think. Amen? And He's there to carry you. He's there to, to, uh, to provide for you. He's there to meet you at the point of your need. Amen? And more than anything else, He's there to love you. And that's what the shepherd does. The shepherd makes sure that all the sheep there, it's, it's more for reassurance, you know, for the shepherd to be in the center, right, during a dark period. He cannot go to the front lest the weak ones might, might slacken behind and, and when He looks back, it's dark. He can't see. Okay, so He go to the center. Amen. So when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, the psalmist says, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. Notice, during a dark period, you, you are with me. It's no more he. Friend, when you go through a dark season, know that he's closer than you can imagine. Amen. Don't, don't run to someone to ask for prayer. Don't, because that, that, that sometimes, okay, you know, it's okay. You know, we have uh, live chats that go on all the time and people are asking for prayer all the time. We encourage that, amen? Take advantage of the anointing, especially on the pastors and all that. There's no problem. But first and foremost, pray, amen? And have a direct uh, interaction with the Lord. Have a direct com communion with the Lord. He loves it. He wants to hear your voice. And then you can ask others to pray as well, amen? But talk to the Lord. Notice that the psalmist, when he... 
going, uh, during good times, he says, he makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores me. But when it comes to a dark season, amen, going through a trial, it could be a trial of sickness at this time in your life. Maybe it's a trial of, of uh, going through a season where there's not enough. But whatever it is, my friend, He's going to be there closer than your breath. Amen. And He's waiting for you to just talk to Him during this time. You don't have to have perfect prayers, good prayers, you know. Just talk to Him. You are with me. Just tell Him, you are with me, Lord. You are with me. Father, amen. Lord Jesus, you are with me. You are my shepherd. Amen. I will not lack. I will not lack. I will not lack. In the future, there'll be no lack because you are my shepherd. I will not lack. Amen. So, notice you are addressing Him directly. You are with me. No more in the third person, He, but in the second person, You. Amen. You are with me. From Joseph Prince comes a brand new book, Give Me This Mountain. Give Me This Mountain is based on the life of a man of faith in the Bible called Caleb. At 85 years old, he stood at the foot of a little mountain that everyone said was impossible to conquer and he uttered these very words, Give me this mountain. There is so much for us to learn from Caleb's story when it comes to real, raw, and authentic faith. Every part of this book, the cover, the content, the images chosen, and even the way the book has been laid out was designed to create the experience of taking an expedition with the Lord. Over four weeks, we'll cover four base camps of faith. At each base camp, you'll get to explore a new aspect of faith and learn how to apply it in your life. At the end of each day's reading, there is an Own the Word section where you can engage with thought-provoking reflections and activities that will help you apply what you just learned in the context of your own life. I really believe that as you take this journey, you'll begin to walk in God's ways of faith and surmount every mountain in your life. God bless you. Joseph Prince's brand new book, Give Me This Mountain, is now available. Find out more at josephprince.com mountain. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.